One of the primary goals with the 2003 Fairholme Prescribed Fire was to restore this kind of forest, the Douglas fir savanna. But we weren't sure exactly how it was going to work, so we needed to do some research to follow up. Some of our researchers are here today. Jane, so tell me, what were the concerns about the Douglas fir tree with respect to the Fairholme fire? Well, Dave, on the Fairholme, we have some of the oldest Douglas fir trees in Alberta, and some of them up here are upwards of 700 years old. So really? We really want to conserve those. So what kind of things did you do to try and protect the Douglas fir? Um, well, per beforehand we went in and uh, did a lot of uh, raking around some of the bases of the trees. So naturally they've got this really thick bark that protects them from low intensity yep. fire. But over time fuel will accumulate around the bottom so kind of increase their risk of dying. So we went in with crews and uh, raked around the bases of the trees to help ensure that they survive or in other places uh, they thinned out if there's a lot of small trees around them they thin yeah. that out with chainsaws or we also use different ignition techniques to uh, minimize how hot the fire got oh. around them. So. So, so what kind of ignition techniques did you use? Uh, well for instance in this area um, you can kind of see there's just kind of gentle fire that yep. didn't crawl very high and that was done uh, with hand drip torches so people yep. would walk along and just light it by hand and then in are other areas we did uh, kind of low intensity, so on days where the weather wasn't that conducive to really hot fire, we kind of used aerial ignition for the helicopter to do those parts. So, so a lot of work has gone into ensuring that these trees would survive that fire. Yeah, for sure. We've got 164 plots on uh, the fair home that we're re-measuring, or that we measured prior to the burn and we're re-measuring now. And so did they survive? All of them survived? Or did some of them perish in the fire? Yeah, so we will see some mortality, especially in some of the plots that, uh, that burn more intensely in the middle of the summer as the, the wood dried out. But uh, we're hoping that a lot of these really big trees survive. But uh, we won't know until we analyze the data. Yeah, yeah. But overall looking like a pretty good success story. Yeah, so far. <laughs> yeah, good news. Well, keep going with your plots. I hope it goes well. Okay, thanks Dave. <laughs> thanks. See ya. In the quest to ensure that our forests here in Banff National Park are healthy, we've learned a lot. We've learned about the lodgepole pine tree and how it needs fire to open up the cones to reproduce. We've learned how the aspen trees need fire in order to encourage those suckers to come up out of the ground, out of the root system. We've learned how Douglas fir trees have those, that thick bark that enables them to survive lower intensity fires. We've also learned how much of a role people have played in allowing fire to move through this ecosystem. I hope that someday you have the opportunity to come to Johnson Lake, walk around, look at the forest yourselves, and see the stories in the landscape. <laughs>